negotiations and stuff. So um, Greg's going to explain a little bit about dual option insurance, which looks like what we're going to probably go to possibly for next year. So both the HSA and then regular insurance. So take it away, Greg. But before I start, the camera adds 10 pounds. So <laughs> when you replay it, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm down to, I lost 50, and I'm trying to go to 40 more. So I'm I've gained 40. I'm <laughs> <laughs> two of you. <laughs> yeah, the first 40 was easy, so now it's the next 40. Uh, anyway, well, thanks for having me come out. Um, my name is Greg Long with the Educators Health Alliance. So let's kind of tell you who I am. I just don't think I just flew in here and give you a bunch of lines and then leave. So um, first off, I was a teacher. I taught in Lincoln for seven years and then Omaha for three. And then who's supposed to be a teacher in here anymore? History? No. no. Well, anyway, close up. It's a close up program. I took nine kids out to Washington, D.C. And then that's where my life changed. Believe it or not, for the better in D.C. Where I actually got a job offer and went to Capitol Hill Day and ended up working in Congress for nine or seven years after that trip. And so drove back, flew back home. Next thing I know, I was flying back out, actually working in D.C. It was supposed to be a year only, turned into seven years. And then now I'm finally back in Lincoln doing this job for the last three. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, that being said, when I was a teacher, I had no idea what the EHA was. And when I looked at my insurance, I just looked at my card and said, okay, I have Blue Cross Blue Shield. But that can't be farther from the truth. And so while they administer our health insurance, they don't own it. You own it. And you own it through the EHA. And so when I go out and I talk to superintendents and school boards and teachers, it's everybody together has a stake in the game. And so how the EHA runs is actually, like, I'll do it really quick. This, the NSEA has six voting members. The superintendent has three. This, it's superintendent association. And the school board has three. Nothing changes on your insurance unless the NSEA says yes. Because it takes seven votes to pass. And so that's where I say you have that representation. All the way from the first day that you're hired, to all the way to 65. So it's really important that you realize that, that you have ownership in this, that you have a stake in this, and for your insurance. It's just not something that fly by the wind, whatever happens, happens. You actually have a part in it. So does everybody else, 77,000 people. So when the EHA comes out and they do their stuff with deductibles and premiums, it's actually trying to find that balance between what the, what the member should assume, and then what the school should assume on premiums. So you kind of get that, that, that even balance. And while the deductibles did go up, and we can talk about that in a little bit, it's a very balanced type of way they do it. It's an actuarial math. I'm not that guy. But <laughs> while it did go up, I can tell you, for the $750 deductible, only 2% of our members statewide hit the deductible. So when you actually start thinking about, okay, does this really affect me? It's going to probably affect you because you're having a baby. And it's not going to hold off till next January. So, no. so, <laughs> so you're going to be really mad that you guys didn't go to this sooner. But that being said... Only 2% about hit the deductible. So who it really affects is not very many. But if it does, you are looking at an increase. So let's not paint a really great picture. But I'll tell you, nationwide, the average deductible for an individual nationwide is $1,300 for a group our size. And the costs are even higher than what we pay. And so while the out-of-pockets are getting higher, we beat the national average on everything. And there's a reason for it, too, because we're teachers and we're healthy and we know what we're doing. And so, that being said, as we move forward, you have that stake in the game. You are guaranteed insurance from you when you retire all the way to 65, and then you're going to Medicare, and then the NSEA has supplemental. So you have that represent representation. Even after you retire, you have that rep 
that representation through the teachers association. If the school left, you lose that representation as that member because a school that leaves takes their individuals that retire with them to their new plan. So there are schools, there was one school that left, the EHA, and they didn't tell their retirees, oh, by the way, you lost your health insurance. Can you imagine those phone calls I got? There were a few. Not my fault. This is the one time I said, oh, I call your administration, have fun with that. So, <laughs> not me, not my deal. So, but that's the thing, and they'll be back, because they're one claim away from having their premiums go through the roof. I will tell you, there's someone in Nebraska, I don't know where, but they have already reached $4.1 million to their utilization for health care in our group. Could you imagine if that person was here at this school and you were on your own, and that person was, you know, charging $4.1 million to your plan? Well, I hope they're okay, and it doesn't sound like they're doing quite well, but could you imagine that would be spread amongst you guys, not the entire state, where that $4.1 million does give a little ripple effect, but it's not the tidal wave that would destroy you financially and who knows what would happen. And so that's why it's important that you guys realize the big picture, that everybody's okay, that the school's going to be there and they're going to be okay and you're going to be okay because you're always covered. And so that's the most important. So I'm Greg Long with the EHA and that's what we do. This is us taking care of you guys. We could go out to bid at some point and say, Blue Cross, we don't need you anymore. We could do that. If we don't feel like we're getting the best deal, we can do that. And it probably will happen sometime sooner than later. Don't know when, but it will. And so, but that's just good business to make sure we're getting the best for our dollar. We also have an actuary that checks everything that Blue Cross does. The EHA has two employees for the whole state, me and the actuary, that's it. So there's basically no overhead. If I run the whole, I cover the entire state. So you're my first meeting of 2016. <laughs> it won't be my last. So I did, I think I did 47,000 miles this year traveling. So you're the first miles for the year. All right. So that being said, my name is Greg Long with EHA, and I'm happy to talk to you about the net, what's going to happen in the future. The whole game has changed in insurance. It changed with the Affordable Care Act, but we actually made, you know, you hear all the doomsday stuff, and, you know, if you watch Fox News, it's all bad. CNN. You couldn't believe how great it is, or, or NSNBC, whatever. But we'll give you the real scoop right here, okay? Some of it is very, very good. Some of it's not very good. But it's the middle road. It's what, let's really get down to the numbers of what happened, okay? And so we're going to talk about it this way. All right. Before we get going, this website, and I'll be able to email this to you, and I'll email it to the superintendent, and he can get it to you, or I can email it to you personally. I don't care because I represent everybody. But it can be found on www.ehaplan.org. And it's going to be interesting, very important that you know this website because this is where all your information is going to be. This is the same thing that the school boards and superintendents look at. It's what you should be looking at when you make your decisions, what you want to do. Okay? So EHA Plan, I manage that site. So if there's something you don't like, you can email me and tell me what you don't like or what you do like about it. All right, so let's talk about... Let's talk insurance, what it is now, what it's going to be later, okay? So, you have right now a $750, $900 deductible. $750 this year, this is next year, okay? So, before you had two, two buckets. You had a pharmacy bucket and you had a health care bucket, a health, the, whatever you're utilizing your health care. So now, but that all changed, the ACA. The ACA made it one bucket. So what happens now is, let's say that you go in, and I'm going to pick on you. Um, let's say she blew your knee out. You're exercising, blew your knee out. She's going to have $750 deductible this year. So $750. She's going to hit that deductible. It's $80.20 for the next $3,000, whatever it is, $3,500, something like that. So 80-20, until she hits that magic number of $4,250, okay? Once she hits $4,250, she's covered at 100%. She's done. There's no more co-pays. There's no co-pays for, for any medicine, any painkillers, nothing. She is done. $4,250. Next year, it's $4,650. 
okay? So you hit the 900 is 80-20. That's a lot of money. If you're a family, now let's put it on this way. You married kids? No kids? No kids? Uh, all right, well, good job there. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. Don't fall into that trap yet. All right, so. You're too late. All right, so. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's say you had that it, that happen. Your husband, God bless him, he's on the other 750, 4,250 track, okay? So while his deductible and co-insurance and all that has not been met yet. So there's two train tracks, okay? Now we'll say you, family, maybe this is your, I don't know, but just joking, two, third kid, whatever. So, second, all right, congratulations. All right, so, so you have, you had that scenario, 4,250, the rest of your family's on the other 4,250 track, all combined, okay? So a total of 8,500 for the year. Next year, it's 9,300. That is a ton of money. I have a family out in Arcadia. They were both diabetic, and they both maxed out every year at 8,500. That's a ton of money, okay? So keep this... So if you're a high user right now, you're going to definitely want to hear this. If you're a low user, you're definitely going to want to hear this. It's the medium people that you'll have to do your homework. All right. Any questions on this one? I just threw a ton of numbers at you. Okay. Well, let's talk about this one now. I'm just going to go to 3,500 because that's what it's going to be for you guys. So same thing. Let's say she's on the dual option now. Blows her knee out. $3,500. Done. She's going to pay the first $3,500. Blue Cross isn't going to help her. But once she hits $3,500, she's covered at 100%. Done. There's nothing, no, no co pays, anything. You're going to pay first dollar for everything for the first 30 Still a lot of money, but if you're that Arcadia family and you're that individual maxing out every year, dollar for dollar, this is your better best <coughs> bet. You're saving. Let's go back. This is called the dual. Dual, this is the high deductible. This, this is the health savings. This account. is the health savings one. So HSA. The HSA qualifies. So the next year, next year is four thousand six fifty on the nine hundred dollar. Don't let this deductible fool you. While you're feeling comfortable at nine hundred dollars, oh, I feel great. This is this is the catch, right here. Four thousand six fifty. Three five three thousand five hundred. You're saving $1,150 right off the top just going to this plan if you know you're going to max out. And this also covers the two tracks. Like it's the same deal for this. Hold on. All right. I mean, I'm giving you the hard part first. Okay. There are, new tra there are no two train tracks. You blew your knee out. It's 30. If you're married now, it's $68.50 for you. But everybody's covered at 100% at 6850. Okay. Everyone's covered at 100% on the other plan for 9,300. What if your husband is a medium user? Who knows? Maybe they don't use it at all. If that might be a rough year, but we'll talk about it here in a second why it might not be rough. Greg, can I ask you something here real quick? Yes. So I want, I want to hear you say that again because that would be different than I think even I was led to believe. On the HSA, that family total includes the employee's thirty-five hundred. Yeah. So, so that sixty-eight fifty includes my thirty-five hundred. So my and family's covered. Your family's covered after sixty-eight fifty is met. There's no two. Okay. So her knee's going to cost her sixty-eight fifty, yeah. but then everybody's yeah. paying. That's the hard. Then everything's done, covered at one hundred percent. But it's not double that because there's no. two different tracks. No. no. Okay. Sixty-eight fifty, you're done. Or your husband does sixty-eight fifty, then you're done covering. It doesn't matter. Or you guys combine sixty-eight fifty. Yeah. So it's either you guys combined or whoever. It's just total house household income going out sixty-eight fifty. Okay. So go back to the Arcadia family. They're maxing out at eighty-five hundred dollars every year. Which plan are they going to? They're going to this one. They're going to save thousands of dollars right now. Okay, that's the hard part. Okay. This is the fun. Well, we'll talk about the business first. Here's the here's this year's 4250, 3100, but we're not gonna really talk about that one. 
This is next year, 4650 to 3500 if you're an individual. If you're in the family, it's 9300 for the 900 or 6850. So you're still saving 2000 500, you know, you're saving a lot of money if you're uh, if you're maxing out every year. Yes, ma'am. Now that total includes prescription drugs. Everything also, right? you use, yeah. So so right now if if I have a family member on a two hundred dollar a month medicine, but it, we pay fifty. We'd pay two hundred. You would pay. We'll and, talk about that in a minute. You okay. know, you're my AP student, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Where <laughs> you're gonna pay the you're gonna pay the Blue Cross Blue Shield discounted price whatever that full price is. So the drug might be $200, it might be $300. Blue Cross might get a $200 for 200 bucks. That's what you'll pay that discounted price. Does that make sense? Where is because the, where, Blue Cross- Where do I learn that information? I'll tell you here in a minute. You're like way out. <laughs> All right, so. Okay. Sell that one. <laughs> All right, good, very good. It's a very good question though. We'll talk about that. Don't let me forget, okay? All right, thank you. All right, so 6850. Now this is the fun stuff. Well, how do you fund this? Because $3500 is a lot of money for an individual <laughs> and 6850 is a very a lot of money for a family <coughs> to spend before you get help. This is the cool part of the NSCA and the EHA and the superintendents and everybody working together. Because of how your benefits are set up, there is a premium savings between the high now this is what's crazy. The high deductible premium is cheaper than the 900. Even though the $900 premium costs you more in the long run as an individual, the premium is more expensive. The premium savings for next year for an individual is $1,200 or $1,002.96. Now I went to a private school and we weren't very good at math, so don't hold it to me, but, but it's around there. It's within cents, dollars. Thousand dollars. Just make it easy. She blew her knee out as an individual. Her deductible is thirty five hundred, right? But she's getting a thousand dollars from the premium savings. What's her new out of pocket that she's gonna have to pay for her knee now? Twenty five. Is that taking money away? We'll talk about that in a minute. But you're assuming that we're that the teachers are paying premium, but they're not. No, so schools pay the premium. So I have a thousand dollars savings when they don't pay the premium. Because the schools pay the premium, so whatever the, the difference is, school. goes right to the no, goes no, right to the. No. no. It, well, hold on. I mean, no, I, I think I can answer this question really easy. If we do the dual choice, we're obligated to pay each employee the, nearly the same benefit. Okay, so if they choose 900 deductible, that all that benefits being paid in premium. Yeah. If they choose the HSA, they get the difference between the two premiums put into their HSA okay. deposited yep. from the school. Yep. Which so, is right here. Yeah. So if you there choose an the HSA, the school is starting you out with cash yep. in your right for your deductible. Go. You see the difference right here. Now this is what's nuts. This is the this is blows my mind. This is such a great problem to have. If you're a family now, this is where you're going to be really mad because you're not going to be on this plan yet. $68.50 is her, her out of pocket, right? So I guarantee you her baby and her pregnancy would cost her $68.50. Guaranteed. But the school, because she's this is the only time it pays to have children and be married at the same time. All right. <laughs> so 20 students, I'm just giving you a $2,828 every year. So $6,850 minus $2,800, what's your new out of pocket? Anybody have a calculator quick? $4,021.96. $4,021 to cover the entire family at 100%. So Go back to the, that number is guaranteed to be put in my account every single year. That's right, and we're going to even, even have a better. There is literally no catch because I am telling you the straight up truth. This is why I like to come out and not Blue Cross because they don't really like to talk about this too much. He leave, he leave that part. And so, but they won't. They just kind of use they use insurance technology, and they just don't like you. They don't. It just 
because they've been in the business for 20,000 years and this is how they talk. But this is the real, this is it. There is no catch. You will get this every year. In fact, let me just prove to you, last year, that was the premium savings for this year. $26.95, it went up. The savings went up. $200. Why? Because the increase, the four, whatever, I don't even know what our increase was, Nick. I haven't done it. I, this is my first one out uh, since vacation. 4.6%. Yeah, I was like 4.6. That 4.6 goes towards that premium and the other premium. So it's a bigger jump for the PPO than it is the HSA. So you're seeing a larger increase in the premium savings. That might change. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it went up 200 bucks this year. Yes. So with the 6850, the 2828 going in, mm -hmm. we have to have a minimum $25 a month going into a set up HSA account. Correct? No. So we'll you, talk about that in a minute. So the four grand that I'm that I need to save because right now the way we do it, you know, we're going in. We have our obviously the copays, uh -huh. prescriptions. You're banking that during the year you're not going to have a bad deal. So last year my daughter had her tonsils taken out. It's $8,800 for a 20 minute procedure. <laughs> I got a bill from for seventeen hundred and sixty dollars from Columbus Hospital for the difference of what the eighty eight hundred after my deductible and my twenty percent of my co insurance. See, and that's where you gotta fall in the middle. So Well I know I max it out, I max out my pay flex every year. We have four kids, we're always going to the doctor. So in this yeah. case, <laughs> I got sixty eight hundred and fifty dollar deductible family. Yeah. You're putting twenty eight twenty eight in, that means I gotta come up with four grand. That's it. You're Over done. the year. Yeah. But if I'm on my current plan now and I go the whole year and nobody has a problem, it didn't cost me anything. Yeah, but well, but let me let me get to like individual stuff here in a minute. Okay. So start thinking your stuff because let me really explain this and then we'll kind of go to it. Okay. But those are good 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 thoughts. You're on the right set. Okay. One other so, question too. Can that savings? You know, like now you're going to put it in there. Well, obviously, you're putting more in for family than you are for. Is it a point where a school board eventually will say, okay, okay but only let's stop. Next. Let's stop <laughs> this. Let me just keep going. You guys are probably the smartest teachers I've ever had. So, so, okay. So, let me. Superintendent's out there like, what the heck? All right. So, it's 2800 bucks. The underwriting guidelines are set in there for a reason. None of those under, underwriting guidelines will change unless the teachers say yes. So they have to do it. They'll always do it. They'd want to do it anyway. And so there are schools that are, that are doing, having other things that are still putting this and they don't even have to do it. But they see the value of it, of just helping the teacher out there. They're not going to, they, they're not going away. So the, it can't go away unless the underwriting change. If the underwriting's change, you will see an uproar in the teachers and that just not going to happen. All right? So because the NSCA would never say yes. And I would tell the NSCA, here's what's going on, because I represent everybody equally. And so that being said, 2828 goes to you. All right, so that so that cuts your cost down to 4,000. So let's do the Arcadia family again. They're spending 8,500 or 9,000 dollars in the other plan. Now they're only spending 4,000, so it's a 5,000 dollar savings every year because they know they're maxing out. They're only paying four thousand of their own money. That's fifty thousand dollars in ten years. That's a hundred thousand dollars in twenty years. That's the price of a home that they saved because they went to the dual option. If you know you're going to max out, this is an absolute no-brainer. You switch, and you take your money and you laugh all the way to the bank, and you know that your budget. You can set your budget perfect. You'll know what year in how much you have to pay towards your health insurance, you'll know where you're at towards your deductible all the time. Now, here's the really cool part. Let's say that, now this is me, I, I have two kids on my plan and that's it. My deductible is just like this. But I don't get 2800 I wish I did, but I don't. I only get 1000 But let's say it's still you guys. So, let's say you're... I'm going to pick on you because you're, let's say that you have the one child and let's say they have, boy, girl? Girl. Name? Emma. Cute name. Emma has an ear infection and she has strep throat or whatever or something, some sinus. She goes to the doctor twice 
and you get the gallon of amoxicillin and do all that stuff, and then you go to the doctor once for a sinus infection, and then your husband, so let's say you spent 800 bucks on there, because you're paying full price. So you go in, and we'll talk about individual how it works, but you go in 800 bucks, you paid 800. But you got 2,800 from the school. How much did you spend of your own money? Zero. Nothing. So if you're a low user, do you know you're not going to hit it? You take this. Because you'll spend no money of your own. Guaranteed. That, that, because you're getting this. Now. That rolls over every year. You just quit <laughs> stealing Stop my it. thunder. <laughs> put you in the corner. All right. So if you don't use it, which was my very next thing, very good job, it rolls over. If you're on a flex account, the money disappears. This does not, it stays with you. So let's say you have 10 good years of healthy, never hit your deductible. You're looking at 20 grand in your HSA that you did nothing for but be healthy. Can we take it out? Cool. <laughs> do that the next question. You're not going to Vegas with it. We're not putting it on black. All right. Yeah. Um, is it taxable? Nope. Is my carryover taxable? No. So we'll talk to so, yourself. Stays in there. You're going to want to use it for health care only. You're not going to go to the boats in Council Bluffs or go to the Bellagio in Vegas. You could. You're going to pay a penalty. But it's going to pay for your health insurance there. It never goes away. So let's say you hit 65. When you're 65, you're not eligible anymore for the HSA. That's government for you. That's not EHA rules. It's a federal <laughs> rule. You spend it down to zero, and then the money goes away. If you go to another school, they don't offer the dual option. Can't fund the account anymore, but you spend it down to zero, money goes away. So now you're looking at not only having it for when you're working, but this money could be used towards retirement, health care needs, paying health care bills. So you could be sitting at 20 grand after you retire, done, or more. It all depends on what you want to put in it. And so it carries over every year. You might have a you know pretty good year, you might not. If you, depending on what bank you use, I know Union Bank, and I'm not I'm not a billboard for them, but they allow, excuse me, they allow you to invest that money into a mutual fund. If I had money in HSA right now, I'd be throwing it in the stock market when the prices are going down because Buy low, sell high. So what happens is, is you take part of your money. Let's say you have five thousand, ten thousand. Let's say you have ten thousand in there. You could take five thousand of that, then throw it in a mutual fund from Union Bank would do it for you, and you let that five thousand just grow on the market. You cash it out and put it right back in your HSA. No taxes. It goes in tax free. It grows tax free. It spends tax free. As long as you use it for qualified expenses, meaning health care. You can go to the IRS website and you can take a look at what it goes for. You can buy glasses, you can buy contacts, you can do all sorts of this with this money. Yes, ma'am. How does this work if you're usually in a family, but my husband is older than me and he's 65. So he would. And he has his insurance through me. Well, then you wouldn't. You, you'd want to keep him on the insurance. You wouldn't be able to go to this because he wouldn't be eligible for the HSA. But could I do it as a single mm -hmm. and do it that way then? And, yeah, and then he'd have to go to Medicare. Unless you're using. But even then, yeah, because he can't be part of the. Okay. And you can talk to the bank on that one. On that's a more of a tax issue through guidelines than it is me on that one. You can't be dual covered. So let's say that you're on someone else's plan. You could be, but you lose your HSA eligibility and you'd never want to go to this plan if you didn't have your HSA. So you have to be on this plan. So, so I'll even interrupt, sorry for interrupting. No. But, but the teachers and, and the school board have not officially settled yet, but the plan on the table is dual choice for that very reason. Nobody is going to be forced to go to an HSA yeah. because there's too many unique situations in our district. 
So everybody will have the option between the HSA and a standard plan. And so everybody might have to do a little bit of their own homework as to how it will affect you. My suggestion would be if you have a bunch of questions is start compiling them and get them to Lori or I. And then we're going to have Greg come back out at the yeah. end of the school year once the insurance has been decided to walk everybody through what they need to do yeah. next year. And so let me kind of talk about how it works. So that's a great segue because that's okay. a very good thought. So what happens is the school is going to offer it for three years. The dual option, and, and he, you are absolutely 100% correct. The school doesn't care what plan you pick. EHA doesn't care what plan you pick. Blue Cross doesn't care what plan you pick. It's what best fits your family individual needs. So school offers it for three years, and they'll have to renew the contract for another three years. Then within that con, this is the cool part, you can go back and forth every 12 months. So you're going to start the school year off next year. Everybody's going to have to tell the school where they plan to go starting January 1 of next year, not September. So September comes in, they're just going to, the school's just going to offer the 900. Everybody's going to be on the 900. Then they're going to open it up in December. And then in December, you'll tell the school which plan you want to go to. Then that's when it starts January 1. You don't start at the beginning of the year because your deductible would go to zero. We don't want that. We want it to start when your deductible starts new. And so you will start January 1. Next December, you don't like the plan, go back to the PPO. Doesn't matter. You get the flexibility of what you want, what best fits your needs. So if I know that I'm going to have a knee surgery, I, and I can hold off till January of next year, I am jumping on this plan because I'm going to save money. So I'm basically covering my entire family for $4,000 of my own money. $2,800 is coming from the school. I'm done. My family is covered 100% for four grand. I could care less who has to go to the doctor or not because it's zero dollars coming out of my pocket after the first four of my own money. Yes. And you mentioned the three years that the school has to auction in. Yeah. Does that mean that that the PPO deductibles are not going to change for three years? Are they going to stay 900 for three years? Great question. Years? Great question. What will happen? No, they're not. They <laughs> might. <laughs> but we'll have dual choice for three years. You'll have dual choice. So this is the cool part of the HA too. And so our plan's already out for next school year. So you'll know 18 months prior if you want to switch. There's no hidden tricks. No, everything's <clears throat> transparent. So our plans are out in October, end of October. You'll know 16 months before that plan even takes effect. Because it won't take effect until the next January. Well, we have September, but you'll switch in December. You're, you're out of it. You're back in the PPO. So it doesn't matter. Now, I will tell you, though, the out-of-pocket for the high deductible will always be lower than the PPO. If it isn't, then you go to the PPO. I mean, I, so, but you get to have that. You have that, and that's part of the being part of the EHA family, is the insurance is telling you this is how much you're going to spend, and you can plan that a year in advance. So everyone can make the best decision that best fits their needs. Now, there's a little bit of a roll in the dice, though, too. Let's be honest, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you just, but if something does bad happen, you know it's four grand, you're covered. And so that's kind of one of the really good things too. So there's a kind of a comfort in that as well. Now it's different because you're paying full price. So it's the people that are in the middle. You got to see how much you're paying. What are you paying? So you go into my blue. You can look at what Blue Cross pays, what you pay. Add them together, that's your out of pocket for the year. If your out of pocket's greater than that number, you go. If your out of pocket's way less than that number, you go. If it's right in the middle, do some more homework. So you can make the best decision you want for your family. And, it, and no one cares because it's your choice. That's the cool part. So it's three years. And so the deductible might go up. Premium might go up. I can't predict the future. Um, I do know the last, the last uh, 
15 years, there's never been anything higher than, uh, there hasn't been a double digit in 15 years, premium increase. Where this year, there was a, in Nebraska, there was a, a group that does something with education. And there was, I think they're a group of about 50 in Lincoln. I can't remember the name of them. Their premium rose 40% this year. You'll never, you won't see that here. So if you did, the EHA would explode. So, yes. Greg, I, uh, I, currently I contribute pay flex just for medical. Mm -hmm. So if I choose an HSA, I'm done contributing to pay flex, but basically I could do that same thing and contribute to my HSA. Yeah, good point. Another and does it work the same way as being pre-tax? Yep. yep, and so you have, you'll have your HSA, you'll put that in there. So for an individual, you can put in 3,300, somewhere around there a year. School's giving you the first thousand, so you're gonna have, you can put in as much as you want, doesn't matter a month, it's your call. And so the school's giving you $1,000, I don't know how, when they're gonna give it, how they're gonna give it, but they're gonna give it to you. Some schools give it all, some schools go six months, six months, some schools do it quarterly, put it into your account. And so you'll have that money, so you get a, if you're 3,300 here, you're getting a little bit of a head start, and then you got this much to, to fund. And so if you are a family, it's 6,600 and some dollars a year that you can put in, and, but the school's giving you 2,800. It's enough to cover whatever the deductible is. And then you can do the rest. So what I do is I'm not gonna put it all in there because if, if I have to, you can't advance spend, but I know, okay, I got, let's say I have $2,000 in there. All right, I don't really need to be putting in $500 a month out of my paycheck, that's crazy. So what I'll do is I'll go $50 a month tax-free into that account every month. If I get it up to a certain point, like let's say I get it up to about four grand, I just stop funding it. And I just take that 50 bucks and give myself a raise. And so it just depends on what you want. Now I wouldn't do it if you're a school, is there a bookkeeper around here anymore? Nope. I did not let her come to this for fear that her head would explode. She would. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, I'm gonna tell you this though, she'll like this. One, she's not the expert on the HSAs. She's not the expert on this, so don't go to her on those or him. But also, don't go there every other month and say, hey, put another five bucks in, put another 10, no. Get it to a right point, keep it there. Don't change every other month. Just, I'd say do it once a year if you do it. Just get to a comfortable spot. So if you're doing flex, boom, there you go. So how it works is HSA does your Medi-Cal, Medicare, or medical, and then you have a limited purpose 125. It's called a limited purpose. So whoever does your flex business, they would set up limited purpose accounts for the people that do the HSA. So then you could have your dental and vision and your child care if you need child care over there. So you still get those tax breaks, it's just in a different vehicle. You get the same amount, doesn't change anything, it's just a different vehicle than your HSA. Does how, that make sense? How are these funds dispersed? So I go to the doctor and it's $500. Okay. We'll talk about real life here in a minute. Okay, so that's kind of where that's, that's how it works. So you can use, now dental and vision, I don't know how many people use that because you can use your HSA for your dental and vision. I had a, I, this was the stupidest thing ever happened to me, they had to actually pull a tooth and put a fake one in, which I don't recommend because it's really expensive. And so it takes forever. Mm -hmm. But I had to do that, but I used my HSA money to pay for it. Even though it doesn't go anything towards my deductible and my health care. Because your dental still stays the same. Your health and dental are two different plans. But you can take that health care money and pay for your dental if you want. You've got to be careful with it because if something happens medically, you're shortchanging yourself in the long run. And so if you're kind of rolling the dice on it. So how does it work? So here's what happens. You get a debit card. So let's say you use Union Bank. You get a debit card. I don't know, wherever. They're going to give you, it's going to spend like a debit card. So you go to the doctor. So I'll give you, I hardly go. So I went in. Actually went in last year, I had a sinus infection. I have not gotten one this year. I can't believe it, I usually get one every year. But I have not gotten one, but I went in. I told the physician assistant, she's super cool, said give me anything of short of chemotherapy to kill everything in my body, because I am dying. And I gotta be in the, on the road in two days, and I cannot feel like this. I can't even talk, my eyes are bloodshot, this stinks. And so she said, okay, starts laughing at me, and gives me a really expensive antibiotic, because I gotta have the best because I have to be on the road. Can't chance it. 
So, go into the, so I go in, paid my $85 to the doctor with my debit card right there. I just say, hey, I'm on an HSA. So they said, okay, here's your doctor visit because I'm paying full price. So they run it through your Blue Cross, comes up with the discounted price, what Blue Cross pays, that's what you pay, 85 bucks. I went to the- Go to the doctor for $85. In Gretna. Okay, just, just asking. Yeah, just, yeah she's, she probably cut me a break because she likes me. I don't know. <laughs> 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 she flirts with me every time I come in, I'm just joking. All right, so, all right, so anyway, so it was 85 bucks, and so it wasn't too bad. And then I go to the pharmacy, and I'm thinking, okay, this, aren't, this antibiotic is gonna be 60 bucks, something is gonna be pretty high, but I asked for it. The antibiotic was $15. I got out of there spending 100 bucks. Done. Covered it 100%. I went in for a prescription just yesterday. I do some other stuff. It cost me 50 bucks. For but it's really not that expensive. I mean, if you really think about what your drugs are, I mean, the antibiotics they're not that they do the generic you usually get a pretty good deal on. Them. So, mine was $100 done. So, but you also have to realize that, you know, you could have that big one too. So I went in, and my, my son was having issues with his stomach, and this was the big charge, and so they had to go, they had to put the dye down and follow it through and all that stuff, and so I go in, but you always tell your doctor you're on HSA. So I said, hey, he's on HSA, what's this gonna cost me? And she looked at me and she goes, well, it's the normal charge is 200, it was, and this never happens, but it did, it, it does happen. It's 700 bucks. I'm like, ooh, that's gonna bite me. But I, it's my son, you gotta take care of him. So I said, okay, let's do it. Here's, here's my card. And she goes, oh, your HSA. She goes, if you pay me out of your ATM card, I'll charge you 250 and we're done. I'm like, really? They wanted their money now. And so I'm like, okay. I prayed to the Lord that I had 250 in there and I said, give it. And I took it away. <laughs> so don't say decline. But it didn't. And so she ran it 250. He came out and I was done. I took my ATM card. Went right to the, I went, took my debit card for my HSA, went to an ATM, withdrew my money, the 250 I just spent, and deposited it right back into my checking account. You can pay yourself back. I don't know why they did it. I have no idea. She probably got fired for it, but I got a good deal. You don't have to. Um, you can reimburse yourself. You don't have to have any documentation. Nope. So, in. no, you just keep the receipts. And so. You're, if you ever get audited by your favorite IRS agent, then you have everything. So the days of, which is my next part, the days of handing in a receipt and then getting it declined are gone. Your money is there now. It's your money. And so you don't have to sit in receipts. It's your instant money. But on the flip side, you have to be careful because that, a, that, that HSA spends like a debit card. So one last story, went back, went to get some gas. Kids were fighting. I was in there ready to put my card in, I yell at my kids, do the great parenting display of telling them to be quiet, basically telling them to shut up, and uh, put the card in, pump the gas, and here's my HSA card. Because the bank's not gonna, the bank doesn't care what you spend it on, it's money going in, money going out. You get the choice. But I'm a go big, go home guy, and so I fill the whole thing up. I'm like, I'm gonna get tax free, I'm gonna get tax free. So I paid, I filled the car up with $40 worth of gas, and I just took the receipt, kept it. So then, if I went to the doctor, well, what did I do? I took the $40 worth of check to the doctor for 40 bucks, took that receipt, stapled them together, and I'm done. If IRS ever came, okay? So that's how you do that. But let's say you're the one, like not like me, because I always do it by fly by the seat of my pants and just whatever works, works. And so if you do it right, you would call the bank and you'd say, hey, I made a fraudulent charge on accident. And so they'll laugh at you. Again? Yeah, no, totally. All right, this says Barra's Casino. I don't care. Okay. So, but what you do is you just use that, you just take that card, you just have the, the together. But you call the bank, they would do whatever they have to do on their end, and then you send the money in to them. Don't just, because you spent it wrong, put more money in. Because if you overfund your account, you're looking at taxes and penalties. Don't do that. Always call the bank if you've made a mistake and correct it the right way. Don't just put more money in. Because if you went over, let's say you had it all funded for the year and you 
max it, and then you put another 40 bucks in, the government's going to come in and tax you and penalize you. So make sure you do it right. So I always just do it the safe way. I just do it myself, write my check, put the put it together. So that's kind of how that's how it works there. But again, you have to do the homework. What's full price? What's not? How much are you spending versus what you'd spend on the PPO? But you can do all that homework and totally see what you what your expenses are. If you need to get a price on a prescription drug, call a pharmacy. What's this going to cost? I had blood work done, and so I called the pharmacy and said, hey, what, or I called the doctor and said, what's this going to be? Because this is coming out of my pocket. And so they told me, and they go, oh, don't worry about it. It's going to be, it's not that much. So I said, okay, fine. I went in, and it was, it is what it is. It was done. And so you can totally tell them what is, what's going to be the cost, because I'm on an HSA. They're going to want to know that anyway, the doctor, because when the doctor hears you're on an HSA, your, your care changes. So I'll give you an example on that one. Went in a couple, two years ago, I had a bump on my back and it was moving and it felt hard and it was like, what the heck? And, and so I'm like, okay, great, it's cancer. I'm gonna die, who cares, whatever happens, happens. And so, but I went in and he said, well, um, I know what it is, do you want an x-ray? And I'm like, well, if you know what it is, do I need an x-ray? And he goes, no, not really. It's a fatty tissue, it's gonna go away and you'll be done, don't worry about it. And I go, he goes, I'll measure it, but I guarantee you in three weeks, you're not gonna have any pain and it's gonna go away because it was pinching on my nerve when I was working out, it was, it just hurt. And so that being said, he gave me a muscle relaxer, which I enjoyed for about two months. I started out. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's another story. And so, but, that, but that's what I did, boom, true story there, but I was done. But if I was on a PPO plan, what would he have done? X-ray. I asked him, I go, what would you because I'm pretty good friends with him too. And I said, what would you have done, doctor? And he goes, well, X-ray. And then I would have done a, a, an, a what do you call it, ultrasound to find out I'm not pregnant. And so he said he would have, because the X-ray wouldn't have shown anything. And then he would have done an MRI. He knows that I could pay $400, four or 500 bucks. He knows he's going to get a nice check for two grand from Blue Cross Blue Shield because they pay fast. But when you say it's your money coming out of your account, the whole game changes. They actually start caring about what you really need to versus what they can get money-wise. So it's really important that you tell them you're on an HSA every time you go to the doctor. Yes? So how old would kids qualify under the family? 26. 26, regardless of their students. Regardless of their marriage, students playing Sony in the basement until 26, whatever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. But that's, yeah, but that's. Or on the good side, if they're students, they're professional students, they never graduate. They're still. <laughs> so that's kind of where that's at. But um, this is kind of the nutshell of how it works. But really, you got to do the homework. There are huge positives. You could be on the PPO plan, have a great health insurance for 20 years and, and go for it. Or you can kind of roll the dice a little bit, be on this for 20 years, and might have $20,000 to show for it. Your choice. You can give your premium dollar to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Everyone's taken care of. They're going to pay your bills, guaranteed. You could be on this. They're still going to pay your bills, and you might have something to show for it 20 years down the road your choice, what best fits your family needs. I'll tell you right now, this is one school, oh, this is kind of a cool story. The school wasn't, their budget was a little bit messed up for the year, next year. They went to the dual option, and they had, teachers were like, we're not gonna get that big of a raise. They were telling me about it. I'm like, well, that's fine, but you guys are going to dual option. For the people that are going to that, they're looking at a $2,800 raise. It's gonna go towards healthcare, but $2,800. So every year. That's a good thing. Forever? Until you hit 65. Until I hit 65? Well, until you quit school here, then you don't get the premium savings. Oh, yeah. yeah. I get that part. And, yeah. and, and the, the, the 28 28 could change depending on what the difference between oh, the, the premium two. savings. Yeah. Right now it's increased. Right, depending on what the difference is, it could go up or down. But that's what the school would be required to under yeah. EHA underwriting to contribute. 
each year, each calendar year to your HSA for those who have it. And the question about like when would it be in there? Next year, our budget year starts September 1st. Our first HSA payment wouldn't be till January. Most likely next year, everybody would get it the full amount January 1st because we But it to, wouldn't be 2800 for January because you're, there's four months they're not on it. Well, but. And January 1. Right, get, right. It would start, be a prorated amount because. You'll, start get, you'll get 235 a month from January to, to the end of August. August. But then September to December. So then in September we make new, another. It's going to equal up with your deductible, so not the school year. It'll be 2828 for the year, sort of. From, yeah, it'll be kind of a moving target. It could go yeah. up a little bit. You see what I mean? Because there's four months. There's, I know, this one's a hard part. You guys have been teaching all day. But it's four months of that premium savings for the next school year. Is that pre We don't know what that's going to so be. So I'll oh, even make it more confusion. Okay. A plan year is September 1 to gotcha. August 31st. Yeah. The insurance year is January 1st to, Jan to December 31st. We pay you guys on plan years. Mm -hmm. You're insured on a calendar year. So you'll still get the full, but it's going to be for deductible year, not plan year. You'll yeah. still get that. So at the beginning of January 17, does the 28, 28 go in in a lump sum? You you'll have to talk to the school and you'll have to work that the, out. The 75% of that will go in because that's all we have to cover. That's all that's left of the plan year. Yep. But then, that full then on September 1, year. whatever a quarter of that next year. difference is will go in for yeah. that. So you're always going to get 75% of the plan year and a quarter of the next plan year on your calendar year. Yeah. Is it done but at one time or is it monthly? No, no. We would put, in January 1st, we would put the lump the lump sum in, the 75%. Holy September 1, we would put in the 25%. And then on January 1, we would do a three quarter Whoa. again. It would take you 16 months to get that full. No, take 12 no, months. No, no. 12 months. It'll take yeah. 12 months. Actually, so, actually, less than 12 months, you'd have it. Um, if you um, if you for example um, it's going to be bizarre but either way you're going to get it you for so you might pay more out of pocket I'll give you an example you may pay more out of pocket in June July and August because you've already spent that first three quarter then September 1 comes we put that last quarter and now you might not spend anything out of pocket yeah you can, so and it's you can really weird. You can reimburse yourself. Yeah. So, but here's another thing. Let's say I had a really good question. What happens if you had a really big bill right away? Let's say you had the four thousand dollar bill. Well, what would you do under the PPO plan if you had a four thousand dollar? You'd set up a payment plan. Mm -hmm. So a hundred dollars goes into your HSA. Hundred dollars goes out. So you get that tax right off. And then they they put the lump sum in, and then you boom put it right. So. So you do you handle all that? No. The payment plan. I mean HSA. The bank will. The bank will. And we will choose a bank based on a couple of things. So everybody understands is that there's administrative fees. And so some banks are free, some right. banks not. Union Bank costs 20 bucks a year per so, member. So we'll look at admin fees because that's something the school will have to pay. We'll also look at what type of services they provide. Some of the services are going to vary as far as what information. Some of them will manage it all and send information to ADA. So that it's really, really easy. We really think, don't do I think anything. The union, well, the union bank will take it out of the member's account, the 20 bucks. Will they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we, so those are some things we are going to have to investigate. Yeah. The other thing is how many people are going to decide dual choice. So, like, I'm going to have Greg come back probably May 19th, one of the last days of school. And I'm going to kind of ask everybody, what do you think you might do? So I can plan my budget a little bit for next year because, for example... I've got to make sure I've got X amount of dollars available to deposit on January 1st. I'm booked the 19th. Are you really? Yeah. First school ever called me the other day. you got to be kidding me. Well, I'm at Loomis. I can come back through here. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Have you met Loomis' the soup? You want to come here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. All right. Yeah. Okay, so. I wouldn't tell Nicole that either. So. <laughs> With, with the flex, I say I'm going to put $100 a month in my flex, and it's $1,200 a year. On January 1, I can spend that $1,200, okay? Mm -hmm. With the HSA, if I say I'm going to put $100 a month in, 
January 1, can I spend that $1,288? I can't. It's well, every, no, no, hold on, when hold it's on, hold put on, in hold every hold month. Okay. Okay, you're going to, okay, January 1 is when you your account starts. Right. You can't put anything into it until January 1. Right. And then once you put it in, then you can start spending it. You can't advance spend. You can't spend what you don't have. Advanced, yeah. yeah. Right. So, but, okay, so that's the di so that's yeah. So what you would do though okay. is you set that say hey I'll pay you but it's going to be a hundred dollars. But your school's coming in with. But yeah, the other difference right. is we get we're get pre that. we're pre funding you. Right. For example, like if it was next year, well, first nine months, you'd have about yeah. twenty one hundred two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars available on January one. Mm -hmm. Four months. But so what's that? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, like every year. Yeah, I'll, I, if we do this, everybody who's on HSA, I will give you a calendar of when we make deposit, when we'll make deposits, and for how much. So then everybody kind of knows, because I think that's helpful. Yeah. So if you choose HSA on January first, two thousand seventeen, you've got roughly two thousand one hundred fifty dollars to spend. Now, if you contribute like your PayFlex, you're simply just building your pool. And no, you can't advance spend what you're putting in, but we've sort of <coughs> given you an advance to do yeah. that. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. And you, if you do this next year, you cannot elect for flex September 1. In, in Don't September. do any flex, right. but you're limited purpose 125. Because, so you'll have four months of no flex, but you'll be on the PPO anyway. Then once you switch, you'll be done. So don't, you're kind of rolling the dice on that part, but... That's because your plan year is different, and so, but, you know, just save up money then if you need to. Now, also, let's say that you, let's say you, let's say you have a year to pay for that, you know, you're thinking about this, you're going to go. Well, you could open up a little tiny savings account now, or whatever, or just put money away. Put 25 bucks a month in there, right now. And then, what, if you know you're going to go, that 25, let's say you have $600 saved up from now to next January. So you put the money in January 3rd when the bank's open or whatever. That $600 that you put in that you saved on your own cash, you can write that off at the end of the year. So whatever you paid out of your own money that's already been taxed, you put it in, you write that off at the next calendar year. Very important, you know that, yeah. Um, you start the year on a $900 plan. Yeah. You have something large happen in November something there's no way you're going to be able to pay back. So you've set up a payment plan for this mm -hmm. medical expense. You now start the HSA in January. Send me that in an email. I don't know. You know what I'm asking. Yeah. Can, I le can I legally we'll use my... those funds now yeah. to pay for that previous procedure when I was on the $900 plan? Only time this will happen, well, this could happen to us for anybody who switches. Yeah. Good question. I'll have... That's something the bank will have to answer, they can answer and Blue Cross can answer. Okay. Send it to me in an email, will you? I will, absolutely. Good question. I will say this, though. If there's like, let's say you have that, this is another good thing. Let's say you had that big charge the 22nd of December and it was like a $6,000 charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield will roll some of that over to your next plan year deductible. You just call me and say, hey, this happened. That's where I jump on. <laughs> So, seriously, oh yeah, so I'll go to bat for you. I've gotten one person's $39,000 bill forgiven because they're part of the HA. And that's usually once you commit, like there's a December commit date, yeah. isn't that correct, Greg? Yeah, you'll have an open enrollment in December. Right, once you commit to that, then there's some gray area if something <laughs> happens to you between your committal date and it actually taking place January yeah. 1st. If I, if I think yeah. that's kind of what you're talking about, mm -hmm. we've been told that too. Yeah, you just just yeah. email me and we'll take yeah. care of it. Well, that's the cool thing though, because Blue Cross, you know, you guys will get the 800 number. You go, you have a problem with that 800 number, you call me, send me an email. I'll have their boss call you and we'll get it figured out. So, yes sir. Is the group basis, is you it just an underwriting pool? Yeah. What now? So when they just say, is the underwriting pool just SRC or is it banded amongst all the schools? It's all the schools. All the schools. It's huge. Yeah, it's it's 77,000 people. The premium is worth $480 million a year. Same pool we currently. Yeah. On our, it's the same pool. Do, does, do our accounts say we get up to $20,000? Do that, does that accrue interest? Yeah. 
And depends on the bank we choose. Depends on the bank, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So those are all questions. If we do this, I see. I'm a, yeah. I would invest it. I'd go market, but that's me. I'd, well, yeah. I don't. I don't want to leave twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. And it, okay. And the amount that you could put in for a for a lifetime to have in there, you can have like three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in there at one time. If anybody has three hundred sixty thousand dollars in there, I will be your financial advisor and <laughs> help you well, tremendously. And yeah. myself. All right. So yeah. tonight. <laughs> tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No problem. All right. So here's my account. Here's my contact info. That's my personal phone number. Don't call the 800 number. You can call this. It'll get you right to me. Don't call at five on Friday or 5:30 really, because everything's free at that point, and I'll probably be somewhere doing something I shouldn't be doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call at 5.30. I'll be at some, probably some establishment drinking an adult beverage or three. So that's the number. There's my email. I'm pretty good at getting back to you within 24 hours. I'm not doing any editing. Yeah, we won't do that together. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a big guy, but I'm not that. I don't do that. So, so you can give me a call, and I'll answer. You know, I'm, there's 77,000 of you, so give me like... A day to respond email wise, but if you answer, I pretty much answer anytime. So unless I'm on a date or something. I was gonna say I emailed you and you emailed me right back. So yeah, I got an email. Uh, that's just my out. disclaimer. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. And actually, for 18th or 19th, I've got teachers for full days. 20th, they check out. Throw me, give me 18th then. 18th. Okay. Yeah. Send me an email. Well, that means we, de means we definitely cannot have school. <laughs> what time? Uh, uh, earlier the better. Let me sleep in a little bit. Ten? Sure. All right. This is the best job ever. I just work from home. So, yeah. yeah, but you traveled 47,000 miles. Yeah, I know. I don't know about that. But that's all within like a four-month span. This job is great. So. I literally work out in the gym every day. Right? Cause I, I go out and I talk and I go work out. Okay. Stopping it? Yeah. Stopping the recording. Please.